history so you, you can just you know just a refresher so you can go back over this because I think it's pretty interesting when you're when you're playing like a D here we have the fourth right here okay this is the fourth uh, for D <laughs> if you read a piece of music like a chord chart and it says D sus um, that's what it means that it means that you're suspending the third and you're adding a fourth it doesn't have to say D sus four it just says D sus and you know it's talking about the fourth now if you see a piece of music and it says D sus two that means it's suspending the third and adding a two okay okay and E is the two for D okay so uh, so that's your D sus two a lot of people think oh well this is called a D sus two because I'm playing it with two fingers or something like that. I'm like, no, it's it's completely referring to the 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 two in the major scale of D, the second interval. So so that's an E, right? Like an E note. So if you think about it, here's the D sus or D sus four. You could call it to be very clear. This is D. That's adding the third. Okay, D minor. Okay, which you know, obviously. And then D sus two. See how it walks down. Here's the four. Here's the three. Here's the no. Here's the four. Here's the three. Here's the flatted third. Here's the two. Okay. So when you're playing this, this is the sus. Yeah. You can always tell like sus chords because. How do you have an E? Okay. Great question. E will this, have. This is the. Yeah, yeah. Well, and then it goes to E minor, but then it's like, okay, well, how do you how do you do like an E sus two down here in open chord? Well, you can't. You would have to tune this one down one more, the G string. That's not going to work. You do it an E sus open chord. Yeah, like an E. You can't like no. Here's the E sus open chord. Yeah. You can't do a D an E sus two. Okay, because the, the second interval is way down there. Okay, so so you would have to play like you could play um, something like this. That's E sus two. A lot of people confuse that and say, oh, that's like the major bar chord for this. You know, when you're playing on on the root, the A string root, and I'm like, no, this is a major. That's E major. This is E minor. This is E sus two. Okay. So knowing those intervals is really helpful, and the reason why is because of how you can voice the chords in the song. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, swelling into something like I'll do a lot of sus chords. Okay. And then, and then, like for that A, I'll just play a regular A because I'm right there. And then, and then that B minor, I'll play this shape, this B minor seven, because it doesn't sound quite so defined as a B minor. It sounds. And then to an E major, so I can get that. Okay, and then. No, no, not. No, no, not if you, not if you, not if you don't bend it like overly. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. No, no. Yeah. Okay. Part. This is where I'd come in with this fifth out up here. about doing some uh, some arpeggios like this uh, you know I have a couple of effects here one of the important principles also is I mix in like chorus or something like this and that has that kind of stuff on there 
mix it in uh, slightly where most of the signal is very dry. Like you can still hear the guitar. Uh, it's, there's just a bare, barely an effect on that. You hear that kind of low end part. And, and then when you're playing, when you're playing any of these arpeggios, uh, you know, you can work on it with your fingers, you know. Or, okay, or, you know, with the pick, or just do it with your fingers. I have to rethink it using my thumb in there. But, but you know, you can do that with your fingers and then you can play the rest of the song. You don't really, I mean, you just strum with your fingers. It's, it's yeah. you're not really gonna hear it. So anyway. Wow. 